is going on, guys? JD from New York here. The real Mr. 9 to 5. This is WWE Off the Script. This is episode number 42, part number one, to start your weekend off the right way, man. This is for December 7th, 2014 weekending. Thank you all so much for joining me. If you're new around these parts, what the fuck? are you waiting for man this is the number one source for all WWE content right here on youtube.com that includes WWE 2k15 and WWE news and rumors it's been a big month of November I'm gonna keep that rolling right along into December and into 2015 thank you guys so much for all the love and support you've shown this channel it greatly greatly means the world to me and I certainly appreciate all the love and support guys thank you so much all right Moving right along, uh, I do want to make a note. If you guys missed Behind the Mic, man, the return of Behind the Mic, where I talk about Austin, McMahon, the WWE Network live podcast. Go and check it out. I don't mean to blow smoke up my own ass, but when it comes to videos that I'm proud of, this one I am very, very proud of, man. Probably the best quality from a WWE video that I've ever delivered to you guys. Go and check it out. Do yourselves a favor, square away about 36 minutes where I dive into the Austin McMahon podcast and take piece by piece what Vince McMahon said and give you my thoughts and opinions behind the man. Go check it out. Link is down below in the description, all right? And we're going to talk about CM Punk. I know you guys are anticipating my thoughts and opinions on the, you know, the Art of Wrestling Part 1 with CM Punk. I'm going to deliver that next week. It's been a hellacious week schedule-wise for my job. And I have to square away some time to get that to you guys. But I'm going to let this Steve Austin one sink in. I want each and every one of you to go you know, check that out before I dive headfirst into the CM Punk podcast with Colt Cabana. We're going to be talking about CM Punk right now because he was on Colt Cabana again for a second week in a row, The Art of Wrestling. I'm going to dissect what he said in part two of this huge interview with his friend Colt Cabana. All right? But before we get into that, a few things I want to go over. Chair Shot Reality, Labar, Eisenberg, Ghoulish, go check him out. Joe Cronin Show and TRN. If you guys want additional wrestling content right here on YouTube.com, go check those guys out. All three shows are down below in the description of this video. Make sure you go follow, go subscribe, and go support each and every one of them, all right? Because I said so, because Mr. 9 to 5 said so. And finally, guys, before I get into punk, speaking of punk, AJ Lee, motherfucker. Order, order this off WWE.com. It's a WWE.com exclusive. So I got AJ Lee. And the only ones I'm missing now are Hulk Hogan and I believe Cena and Sheamus and Mysterio, if I'm not mistaken, as far as the WWE ones go. So I'm going to make sure to collect all of them. If I can find the Hollywood Hogan one, I would certainly like that one too, That one too, because that one's going to be very rare and very collectible. But I figured I'd get AJ Lee. I didn't want this motherfucker to sell out. So I got AJ Lee, and the box is a little dent, man. I'm WW.com, I'm kind of disappointed in you, man. You didn't take proper care of JD's package, and uh, the box is dent, and I'm I'm one with OCD, man. All my fucking figures that I got in boxes got to be pristine. But that's all right, I'll let it slide. But AJ Lee is in the collection now regardless, so I'm happy about that. Speaking of AJ Lee, man, we're going to be talking about her husband, CM Punk, all right? Leave a like, favorite, share, comment. Let me know what you guys think about this video as I dive into CM Punk right here on Off The Script number 42. Punk is back this week on Cole Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast. All right, if you guys missed that, I will post the link to this podcast down below if you did not hear it. Okay, I'm going to go over what he said. I'm going to dissect what he said. Colt noted that the server crashed last week, and it crashed on me, man. I couldn't download it at all. I couldn't even subscribe to his channel or his podcast on iTunes. That's how crazy it was. Right? It crashed last week, and they got over 10,000 emails, which was not expected for this show. Everybody wanted to ask CM Punk questions. 10,000 emails sent into the show. That is ridiculous. There was less wrestling talk than last week, but Punk still touched on a lot of things. Uh, I broke this down into certain parts for you guys, so let's get into it right now. Punk talked about the name CM Punk and having it since he was a teenager. He knows it's a weird deal and is not exactly sure what people should call him, but he'd rather be called CM Punk unless you know him personally. So if you guys see Mr. Phil Brooks in public, do not address him by his real name. 
obviously we would address him by CM Punk. That's who we know him as. It's only right, uh, and I agree with him there. I would not uh, want people calling me by my real name. If I met any of you guys, I want you guys to call me JD, even though those are the initials for my name. I get where Punk's coming from. I would probably call him CM Punk as well if I see him in person or if I had the opportunity to, which would be fantastic. Um, if you know him personally, then you can call him Phil. He did say that it's a weird deal with the bipolar wrestling business where everyone calls each other by their fake names and it's strange and it's weird to hear. I can understand that. Punk didn't feel that the podcast last week would be as big of a deal as it turned out to be. Punk must be on some type of drugs, man, the Shred Ed superstar. Punk aired his fucking grievances with Colt Cabana. Something that people were longing to hear, and he didn't think it was going to be a big deal. The way he came off, and the fucking, you know, the way he was, you, you just sensed he was so angry, and you, you sensed the animosity coming from his voice, man. You, you sensed the anger. And he didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. He's got to be out of his fucking mind. Colt asked if there was anything Punk didn't cover last week. Punk says that he feels he covered everything and doesn't want to rehash stuff because he doesn't want to come off as sounding bitter. Okay. He talked about the CM Punk chance when AJ Lee is wrestling. He said that he stopped watching his own wrestling matches a long time ago. He doesn't watch the product now, but he will watch his wife's matches. He'd rather if the fans chanted her name instead. Colt noted that, we're, that there were some AJ chants on Monday. During Raw, Punk said that's good. He asked fans to please not chant CM Punk at his friends and just chant it at the guys that suck and wear lips in their boots. Meaning uh, the guys that he has a problem with. Uh, Ryback, Triple H, etc, etc. Right? Number two, uh, he talked about how weird it was when he would hear some fans call him a traitor when he left WWE. Colt said a lot of people asked if he would come back to wrestling, which is always going to be that one glaring question. I've been there and done that, CM Punk says. It's become this big thing to where I'm synonymous with it, and it's like, oh shucks, he shouldn't have gotten his WrestleMania uh, main event, and I feel very much like I was, uh, he should have gotten his WrestleMania main event, and I feel very much like I was communicating that to them, for a great many years, and then the window just closed. Punk said he knows that there's a lot of yes-men in the WWE that will say things to kiss ass, and there are other guys that feel oppressed and love what he said. Colt said that he talked to people in WWE that can't say what Punk said last week, but absolutely loved it. Of course, you're going to get those guys who are too afraid to admit to CM Punk being right, they're too afraid to even talk about it. Why? Because any slip of the tongue and WWE gets wind of it, your TV time will be cut, your push will be cut, if indeed you're getting both of those, and then you're probably going to be, uh, you know, completely taken off TV uh, altogether. So nobody wants that. It's best to keep your mouth shut. If it doesn't concern you, okay, keep your mouth shut. Mind your own business. Punk talked about the people that say he'll be back. Colt said that he doesn't want Punk to give a definite uh, answer right now because he doesn't want him to feel bad about coming back. Punk said that he hears people saying that he'll go back when he goes broke. I doubt Punk is going to go broke anytime soon. I think he's got enough money under his belt to live a happy and healthy life for the remaining years he has left. Punk saved his money and is, and is not a big spender. Colt said that he hears people say... Uh, that maybe not WWE, but maybe he'll do something in pro wrestling in general. Punk is not going anywhere. He's not going to Ring of Honor. He's not going to New Japan. He's not going to TNA. If, if he does come back, he's going back to WWE, which I still firmly believe. After all of this is done and over with, and it's swept under the rug, CM Punk will be back in WWE. Vince McMahon on the podcast with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which I discussed in Behind the Mic number 7, if you missed it. Link is down below. Go and check it out. McMahon wants to work with Punk in some way, shape, or form, and actually verbally apologized to Punk live on the podcast. Whether McMahon is being genuine and heartfelt remains to be seen. Punk said he was completely full of shit and that it was a fake apology. All right. Now, Punk says, okay, then let's play it safe and let's just say definitely uh, it's way too fucking early. 
I have no interest in going back. The difference in my appearance, my mental stability, everything across now from 9 to 10 months ago is so drastically different. All right. Moving on. He says he got where he is now from everything from injuries, the bullshit and the lies. He said he knew he had to leave WWE once he wasn't happy doing what he was doing. He mentioned Ryback again and how he was told he wouldn't have to work with him again. And then WWE begged him to work with Ryback again. He said it was awesome working with the Wyatt family and it was fun. He also talked about dry heaving in the ring on house shows and being so beat up, which he discussed in the first podcast. That's when it wasn't fun anymore because WWE wasn't caring for CM Punk. They always treated him like shit. And from what he talked about in podcast number one with Colt Cabana, it seems like they had a vendetta to do everything possibly wrong to this man, which I don't understand. They didn't want to bring Kurt Angle back for the sake of him dying in the ring is what I'm hearing. But yet CM Punk is injured on the verge of fucking possible death with a staph infection. You don't want to take care of him, but then you don't want to bring Kurt Angle back because you don't want him to die on your watch. See how hypocritical WWE is? I don't understand the things that they do. The first podcast opened up a lot of people's eyes about how the higher-ups in WWE are. They're, they're nothing but typical businessmen who are cutthroat and will do anything to fill their own pockets. They don't give a fuck about you, man. They don't give a fuck about anyone working on that roster. Okay? They only care about themselves. That's what I took away from CM Punk talking about all the problems in WWE. He told the story about wanting time off and telling the office many months in advance that he needed the day off late in the year to go to his friend uh, CJ's wedding. Michael Hayes told him that he would need to talk to Vince McMahon because that's a pay-per-view date. Punk tells Vince, Triple H, and Michael Hayes, and he reminds them once a month. Every month, he's still listed on the schedule for the show. A month before they tell him he's wrestling the Shield, one versus three in a handicap match, which was fucking retarded. I, I think that was the same pay-per-view Daniel Bryan wrestled the Wyatts one on three. That's how lazy WWE creative is, okay? They fucked up that entire angle. Could have been a huge angle between Punk, the Wyatt, Punk, Bryan, the Wyatts, and the Shield, man. That would have been fantastic, all right? Punk said he already missed weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, etc. Vince told him he really needed him. So Punk tells Vince that he'll wrestle first, and AJ will wrestle second, and then they'll fly straight to the wedding. Punk barely made it. It was the tail end of the wedding, but he arrived regardless, okay? On the pay-per-view itself, it's him versus The Shield. They've been pushing The Shield, and they tell Punk that he's, that he's beating them. Several people tell him to make Roman look really, really strong. Punk got sick of Michael Hayes and others coming up to him, and then he said, You know what, what would make them look strong? If they beat me. Vince still wanted Punk to beat all three of them, even though The Shield was supposed to look strong somehow. Punk said that everything is micromanaged to the point that there's no creativity. You can't give ideas because you're one guy and another guy telling you different things. Or you have one guy telling you one thing and another guy telling you another thing there. That's what Punk is trying to describe. Punk didn't want to say that a return to pro wrestling in some form is off the table because then people would hold out hope. There's plenty of guys out there that think they know. Jericho, I think, is one of them. Jericho thinks that I feel exactly how he felt in 2005... And he left for two and a half years or something like that. So from his perspective, he felt in 2005 when he left that he was never going to come back. And now he sees me saying that. And he's probably like, ah, just wait three years, th three years and you'll feel like coming back again. I can see his point of view. But then in turn, I go, motherfucker, they didn't fire you on your wedding day. They didn't purposely and maliciously try to ruin a day that is supposed to be special to you and to everybody. It's a wedding day. Punk doesn't believe the story about there being a coincidence when they fired him. I don't want to hear, oh, it was a coincidence. I don't want to hear the lawyers didn't talk to talent relations. I talked to Hunter on the 11th. On the 13th, FedEx overnight, I got a document that was dated on the 12th. My, my wife asked for that time off so she could get married and go on her honeymoon. The weekend after her honeymoon, she was back on TV. They knew. I don't want to hear, oh, it was a coincidence. You know what? I'll address it. If the apology was sincere, you wouldn't use it as a publicity stunt on Austin's podcast. 
You have my phone number. You have my address. You can text. You could call. You could show up when you're a 10 fucking minute drive from my house and apologize to me like a man. That's the fucking reality of it. He's talking about Vince McMahon apologizing on a podcast, you know, as a publicity stunt to only try and garner viewers to the network. I see his point of view. I see his point of view there. If they were genuinely apologetic and sorry for what they did to Punk, Punk is right about calling, texting, driving over there when they're in town. They know where he is. Knock on his door. Sit down with him. Apologize like a man. I see where he's coming from. He said that's the fucking reality of it. That's the fucking timeline, ladies and gentlemen. I was sick and fucking hurt and sick and tired and burnt out and I walked. And I can do that because I'm an independent fucking contractor. Then I was suspended and then nobody contacted me after my suspension, uh, suspension to be like, you're unsuspended. We need you at Raw. I got those phone calls. We need you at uh, a TV a day after elbow surgery. I got that phone call a day after knee surgery. They weren't afraid to do it then, so where the fuck was my phone call? Oh, I was suspended. Fine, great, I'm suspended. You know what, maybe in two months, I'm going to wind up feeling better, and I'm not going to come to my senses. But nobody ever found out because nobody ever reached out to me. Everybody, every six months, we knew we had a new talent, a uh, head of talent relations. Whether it was Jane Geddes, whether it was Sean McCleary, all of these people have no business being the head of talent relations. Every six months, it's somebody new. You're supposed to relate to the talent, but nobody knew how to talk to these people. I'm a wrestler. The head of the HR department doesn't know anything about taking bumps. He doesn't know what a payday is. If I said, hey, I'm, I'm a blue eye, he wouldn't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So it's hard to relate to these people. I don't want to hear it was a coincidence. It was a publicity stunt. You're sorry. Great. Be a man and fucking call me. Punk was pissed. Punk was pissed. He said that the contracts are not worth the paper they're printed on, and if they were, they wouldn't have settled. He didn't even have to sue. He said, look at Del Rio. He said that you can't put a no-compete clause on an independent contractor. He talked about getting a text from The Rock on Thanksgiving because he was getting tons of tweets from fans that were mad at him after last week's podcast. Punk told Rock that he doesn't think he said anything negative. Punk says... He thinks people were mad about him dropping the title to The Rock. He said Rock was cool about it. That's good to know, okay? They talked about some of the funny memes that were going around online after last week's podcast. Punk said he's not replying to any of the Vince podcast stuff, and that is it. He got everything off his chest. He said again that Vince's apology was not sincere. He said Vince just wanted to make sure a TV camera was on him. Punk mentioned that one of the sponsors that was interested in him was Wizard World. He mentioned it to the WWE office. He wanted some days off that he could go to the Wizard World appearances. There, were, th there was good money on the table for those appearances. He doesn't hear anything from the office. Then he gets a tweet saying that his Wizard World appearance was canceled and he was replaced by Daniel Bryan. It turns out WWE pulled him. Punk said that it would have been a $20,000 payday for four hours of work. He said Mark Carano, the guy you see on Total Divas, told him that he's needed on Mexico for a WWE tour. Punk told him that his check for that tour would be at least $20,000. His check ended up being $5,000 total for that tour for doing hardcore matches against Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman in the main event each night on that tour. He brought the check to TV and told them to fix it. Funny shit. All right. I don't understand why WWE would pull CM Punk on their own volition from Wizard World. Punk is someone people want to see. Punk is going to have eyes and ears on him, and it's going to be a, a madhouse anywhere he goes. Why WWE wouldn't want the company being represented by CM Punk is just mind-boggling to me. I really don't understand that. So they don't tell him that they're pulling him. They pull him like that without telling him, and they replace him with Daniel Bryan. How would you feel? A $20,000 payday, yet Mark Carano wants him to go on Mexico for a $5,000 payday? I would have told them, fuck you. $15,000, I would have did the same thing Punk is doing. Pay me. Pay me the fucking rest of the money that I'm missing out on because you want me to wrestle in Mexico against Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman uh, in a hardcore match all weekend. Uh, that's got to be fucking ridiculous, man. I, I, 
I don't understand that logic. Again, higher-ups thinking they could do whatever they want without a care in the fucking world, man, because they have that position of power and nobody can fucking say otherwise. That's fucked up. It's absolutely fucked up. Slim Jim was another sponsor. He had meetings with them and the head of the company. They tossed ideas for him to be the face of Slim Jim, and they showed him ideas for the ads. Then the people in the office told Slim Jim, No, you don't want CM Punk. You want Big Show, Rey Mysterio, or Eve Torres. He talked about an email he got from Paul Heyman saying that THQ wanted him to be on the cover of a video game. The office said no. They wanted Sheamus on the cover. Punk was not supposed to know about that, but he found out after someone had forwarded him an email. Then the TV show called LA Inc. The company told them, no, they'd rather have Randy Orton there. So those are just a few of the things that made him want to get out of WWE. Can you fucking blame him? Can you blame him? Unfucking believable Punk continues on and said, I don't have people telling me what to tweet. I don't have a faceless writer. I don't even know his name. Walking up to me and catering and going, hey, can you tweet about John Cena's storyline? Then I just look at him and go, yeah, as soon as John Cena tweets about my fucking storyline. I don't got people telling me what to tweet. I don't got people saying, oh, even though that person on Twitter wished all homosexuals died, and then you told them to go kill themselves, you have to take that tweet down. I don't have people telling me to do that anymore. That's fucking retarded, man. You gotta watch out what you tweet. Punk doesn't have to worry about that anymore, okay? He really didn't care what he said on Twitter, regardless when he was still under a WWE contract, but you had the people in WWE monitoring what he was saying, taking shit down and kind of replacing it and putting a PG spin on it. Punk couldn't be, punk couldn't be punk. He couldn't be himself on Twitter. It's fucked up. Fucked up. He said that he still has people occasionally butt-dialing him and butt-tweeting him. He said it's fucking hysterical. Punk said he's still doing stuff with the Nerdist.com. He got that Thor annual coming up and will be at the Challengers Comics in Chicago on Western Avenue. Punk thanked his fans and he said that he had to wait to tell his story for legal reasons. He said that if he's offended anyone, then he's sorry. Basically, if you watched him wrestle or if you ever bought anything of his just to support him, he says thank you. That was part two of WWE CM Punk Cult Cabana on the art of wrestling. If you guys missed that episode, I will post it down below in the description so you guys can go watch it yourselves. I did this to give you guys somewhat of an opinion on the second piece and take away the most important aspects of this second part on the art of wrestling. This is all about my opinion, okay? If you guys want to go and listen to the podcast, go and do it yourselves, okay? This was the biggest story of the week, and I knew it was going to be the biggest story of the week. Everything else I had lined up didn't even come close to this. Okay, so this was going to be the top story for part one of Off The Script. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think down below if you did listen to it. All right? Go and check out my review of the podcast between Steve Austin and Vince McMahon on the WWE Network. I dissect it. Link is down below. Make sure to go check out my friends, Chair Shot Reality, TRN, and Joe Cronin Show. All in the description down below. Go and support. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll be back with part two, guys. All right? I will be back with part two. And uh, that is part one of Off The Script. I'll see you guys on Saturday morning. Take care. And until then, I will talk to you all very soon.